Okay, so I'm ready to set the timing on this 300T engine. And I've already installed the bearings and everything. I've got the connecting rods in place. And I figured this is probably the easiest time before the heads are on or anything else to set the timing on this engine. So in the Sato manuals for twin cylinder engines, there's instructions and a diagram uh, that show how to set the timing on these engines. But that manual is for multiple engines. So it's kind of confusing in a way, but let me just explain a few things and I did do some cropping and pasting, cutting and pasting in that document to put into an image, an all encompassed image for the 270 and 300 twin engines. But the first thing is when they're, here's my crankcase, obviously the pilot would be back here. When they're showing the diagram in their instructions, and I tried to clarify this on the uh, diagram I made, They're talking about the engine as if you're looking at it like this. So keep that in mind. They're talking about it from if you're in the rear of the engine facing forward. Now obviously I can't do that because it's a lot easier for me to invert it like this um, for setting the timing. But as you can see, it says you set this cylinder first, which is the right cylinder, then the left cylinder. Set the crankshaft at top dead center on the right cylinder, it's the same for both, I mean it's top dead center on both, but you want to time the top, the right cylinder first. So I just got a little matter, rubber band here and just kind of got this thing fixtured so it doesn't move much at all. Uh, the next thing I've done here is these timing cases. Uh, these larger engines have the mushroomed out cam followers so you can't use a tool to stick in there and find your position so you kind of have to have your cam followers in there and then hope to hell you can put this on without moving the timing gear but what I do is I use a little bit of automotive brake grease and I just kind of slather it on both sides and it just kind of holds it forms enough of a tension there to uh, actually hold that in place so if you look at that diagram and I'll put that diagram up right now remember from the back of the diagram, or from that looking at that diagram picture, you're in the back of the engine. But what you're seeing on the video here is being in front of the engine. The bottom line is you time the right cylinder first. The timing dot on that gam gear is down. They say in the 9 o'clock position, and that's of course if you're looking at it from the rear of the engine. But if you just look at the timing dot, it's going to be in line with the crankshaft here. Same with the other side, except the other the left side instead of looking at a dot you look at an etch mark on there and I'll show you that also but what I'm going to do here first is just you know, since I don't have to worry about holding my connecting rods at top dead center all I got to do is make sure I think that's a little bit too far make sure that I don't move my dot as I place this in here Okay, so that side should be timed and ready to go. Now again, if you read on that diagram, it says rotate counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is going to be this direction or rotate it this way. So I'm going to drop my little rubber band thing here real quick and rotate counterclockwise one full revolution. And you may say, well, what the hell was the purpose of that? Well, it puts the cam lobes on this timing gear in the right position for the next cylinder's timing. Now, I should just be able to keep this etch mark straight and insert like so.
The only drawback to this method is the only way to know for sure that you got it timed right is to run the engine. Just really can't verify it here now. All right, so theoretically, this engine should be timed right now. Like I said, there's really no way I can verify that, but just have to hope for the best, I guess.